What's going on, everybody? John Eric Poli here with my MMA news, and today's guest, pretty cool backstory here that maybe you guys haven't heard. When he was in college, he was working at Abercrombie and Fitch, and came across Conan O'Brien. Since then, did a few pretty cool things along with his uh, fighting career and now commentary career. Please today to be joined by Kenny Florian. Kenny, nice to see you, man. How you doing, man? You do, you do your research. Yeah, we spoke, uh, I believe, like last year, right around this time, talking about the playoffs, and you had told me that story, and I remembered yeah. it, and uh, quite the story. Okay, that, yeah. you, you go ahead and retell the story for everybody about you meeting Conan O'Brien. Yeah, that's right. I, uh, I was working at Abercrombie and Fitch. Uh, I was working at a mall, and yeah, I, he, he happened to come in. I was like, oh, wow, okay, that's Conan O'Brien. Oh, wow, he's very, very tall. I had no idea. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, and that, that's, that's pretty much it. So that was probably like one of the first like famous people that I'd ever seen at the time. So it was, that was a big deal for me at my life at like 19, 20 years old. And in case there's any uh, kids out there watching, a mall was a shopping thing that used to exist now with all this online world stuff here. Uh, but anyway, man, let's talk about this uh, this PFL season. Obviously, another great season here. Uh, the reason you're here now promoting these playoffs coming up here. Uh, just your thoughts on the season and your excitement level for the playoffs. It's been great so far. You know, it seems like every year there's always some kind of upset, big upset that's shocking. Uh, last year, of course, you know, one of them was when Larissa Pacheco uh, defeated Kayla Harrison in the final. Uh, and this year we had Jesus Pinedo, who defended, who defeated Brendan Lochnane, who, in my opinion, uh, was and still is one of the best featherweights in the world. So it, it just further proof that, you know, to win four fights in the PFL is extremely difficult. To have four fights in eight months is brutal. You know, the training camps, the weight cuts, back to back to back. Um, it's extremely difficult, and uh, no matter what level you're at, um, it, it truly is a, a big-time challenge just to get through four fights undefeated in eight months. 100%. It seems like you know every year it's very rare to see somebody make the playoffs year after year after year. It's a very difficult thing to do. Uh, with that being said, though, uh, are there any matchups, right, when you just look at all the brackets right now that you have like one certain one circle, like you really want to see that certain matchup? Yeah, you know, there's a bunch. I tend to be a little bit biased. Uh, you know, I, I look at uh, the weight classes that I used to compete in, um, and, and I think they're, they're some of the more competitive weight classes, of course. And uh, the one that's coming up August 4th in San Antonio is Bubba Jenkins versus Jesus Pinedo. Uh, Pinedo, as I just mentioned, defeated Brendan Lockdown in a huge upset. And Bubba Jenkins is really firing in all cylinders. It seems like every year he's always better and better and better. Comes from that wrestling pedigree, but really has been filling in some of the other holes in his game. Uh, like finishing ability with certain positions. We're seeing more of that now. And also his striking has looked phenomenal as well. So uh, really is a big time threat everywhere. So I'm looking forward to that one. Both those guys come out very aggressive and uh, that should be a fun one to watch for sure. And I'm glad that you brought up Bubba Jenkins because I wanted to ask you about him, uh, given everything that he's done first in the wrestling uh, department there before he became a professional fighter. Uh, he's a guy, we were saying before, how difficult it is to make the playoffs every year. His third straight year now making the postseason here in the PFL. That, you know, some sort of credit has to go there just to get to this point. He hasn't been able to get it done. Do you think he has the tools, the way how you were saying before, to get it done this year? The third time maybe is the charm for him this time around. I certainly do. You know, it, sometimes, you know, you look at a certain guy and you think, yeah, he comes off as cocky or overconfident or whatever. And sometimes Bubba Jenkins can come off that way. But he really is a student of the game, you know, just looking at how he's able to improve and talking to his coaches and talk, talking to Bubba himself. He's genuinely interested in getting better. That That is his main priority. And I think that um, you, you certainly learn a lot uh, fighting in the PFL, not only like the crazy back to back camps and weight cuts. Uh, but also what you need to do in each individual fight and how to get through safely without taking too much damage and all that stuff. And I think Bubba um, has accrued enough experience at this stage of the game where he can definitely take uh, take it this year. Um, so, yeah, I, I think with those improvements, with that composure, with that maturity, he can definitely get it done. All right, so now ahead of these playoffs, too, everybody usually likes to have some sort of good feel-good feel good story that's out there. Uh, one of them that I thought, and I, I had interviewed this individual, Impa Kasang and I, uh, he has such a great story. Uh, backstory, of course, he fought on Dana White's Contender Series, took him two times to get into the UFC. He gets in the UFC, he had some success, he was 2-2, two and two, wasn't re-signed, then he has to go to the regional scene, he actually loses a fight, so he had to go to the PFL 
uh, challenger series just to get a chance at the PFL roster. Now he does he make the roster then. Now he's in the postseason. What, you know, just talk about his story a little bit, what he's gone through, and just everything to get to this moment in time to make the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a great story. And, you know, similar to Brandon Moreno, who left the UFC and, you know, had to work his way back in, got back in, became a champion of the sport. You know, this could be similar trajectory, a similar path for someone like Impa Kasaganai, uh, as he is in the PFL now. And, you know, you, you can't get stronger with adver- without adversity. And I think that Impa is one of those guys who's very stoic. He doesn't get too high with the big highs, doesn't get too low with the two lows. And um, he has just been focused on improving as a fighter, learning from the experience, staying humble and working hard. And he's in a different weight class now at 205 pounds, may not be the biggest guy in the world, but he does have the speed. He does have the training camp and he does have the experience to do really well. And in my opinion, he's one of the dark horses to win uh, the 205 pound division. So um, he's been looking great. You know, um, he he doesn't talk a whole lot. Uh, He's very humble in his approach, but certainly has the skills and the work ethic uh, to take it all this year. And it would be an amazing story. Um, so uh, he, he's one of those guys that uh, is extremely impressive to talk to. Uh, very intelligent young man, very humble. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I wish him well. And I, I definitely think he can do extremely well. All right, so now we've opened up, right? We're talking about, like, the featherweights with Bubba Jenkins and company. Uh, then we talk about Ipica Song and I. You mentioned him being a dark horse. Then there's a weight class like the welterweight division. For me... I look at that welterweight division, I go, wow, all four of these guys can really win this one here. This is completely wide open. Uh, just talk about that weight class and, and some of those matchups. And again, complete head scratcher. Who's coming out of that one? It could be all four of them. It's extremely difficult. This is another one of those weight classes. You know, when you look at like the average height and size of most humans, you know, they're going to fall between welterweight and featherweight. And that's why it's so dang competitive in those weight classes. And um, you know, you look at the two Magomeds, Magomed Umulatov, Magomed Magomed Karamov. Those two guys are friends and training partners. Uh, they're going to be fighting each other. Uh, and they both come from very similar backgrounds, very similar areas. Uh, and I, I think that's going to be an absolute barn burner. I have no, I have no clue who, who, is, who has the advantage there uh, because they're just so good and so dangerous everywhere. So that should be very interesting. Magomed Karamov looking for his... Uh, second world championship in the PFL. Umbla top looking like an absolute killer. Struggled a little bit in his last fight in a tougher fight than I think a lot of people expected. Um, but I think he learned a lot from that one, going 15 hard minutes. Um, uh, and of course, we have Sado Busi. Uh, Sado Busi taking on a very tough Brazilian fighter, Carlos Leal. Uh, Leal is a goer, man. He comes forward. He's always looking for a finish, whether it's a, a knockout on the feet or on the ground. He's very good there as well. But he's taking on a guy in Sadu Busi who seems like everything is coming together at the right time. We saw him win the championship last year, and I think that helped to give him that much more confidence and momentum in this year. And now he's really letting his weapons fly. I think he always had the potential on the feet to be a devastating striker, but he didn't have the grappling prowess to give him that confidence to go out there and do that. Now it seems like he has that, and he's going out there and calling his own knockouts like he did in his last fight. So... Who wins that whole tournament? I have no idea. Um, you know, the welterweight division is absolutely stacked, and all those guys are really fighting extremely well. All right, so normally whenever we're having a conversation about PFL playoffs, Kayla Harrison's name would always come up, of course. Uh, she's not doing the regular season. She's shifting gears towards the uh, pay-per-view platform, whatever that does uh, indeed kick off. But just want to talk about Kayla real quick. Just uh, I'm not sure if you've gotten to talk to her at all throughout the course of the season so far or not, just how she been doing. Obviously, the last time we saw her, she suffered the first loss of her career, kind of the big storyline, and everybody's waiting to see what she's going to look like whenever she tries to bounce back from that defeat yes you know I, I know that you know just from doing judo for as long as she has um you're going to accrue a lot of different injuries you know your body takes an absolute beating through grappling whether it's wrestling jiu-jitsu or judo it's just very hard on your overall skeletal system and joints and ligaments and all that stuff so um you know i, I think that um MMA is maybe even worse, and she has competed in three seasons in a row. And, um, you know, I think that some of those injuries potentially caught up with her. But more than anything else, Larissa Pacheco just had an amazing performance in that final last year. Uh, and now it's on Kayla Harrison to see what she, how she comes back um, 
what is she going to look like? You know, I know that she's been trying to heal up a lot of injuries. And if I know Kayla well, she's extremely competitive and is going to try to get rid of as many weaknesses in her game as possible, you know. Um, and she's working very hard over an American top team and all of her people that are around her. And I think we're going to see her at, at her best form yet when, when we do see her. So uh, I'm excited to see that. Uh, I think she learned a lot from that last one. I think we, more than anything else, you know, you want to see a fighter prove that they are, they have a champion's uh, heart and a champion mindset. And for Kayla, she was in some very tough spots and she never quit. Sometimes we see people that are really good at being hammers and not very good at being nails. Kayla Harrison, when she was taking big shots, she was firing right back. You know, she kept her composure, was able to show that she is a true warrior. And I can't wait to see her back in the PFL. And with all that being said, too, I know we mentioned her name. Obviously, Francis Nagano, uh, Jake Paul going to be a part of that PFL uh, pay-per-view platform as well. Just your excitement level for that, too, whenever that does indeed kick off and take place. It should be quite the uh, platform for the fighters there. I'm extremely excited. You know, Francis Nagano, one of the best fight- fighters in the sport, period. Uh, everything that he's accomplished has been so impressive. When you look at especially what, where he came from, what he had to do just to get to France, just, you know, all the things that he said he was going to accomplish, he has done. And I think he's a great example for any fighter out there. Um, and, and it's showing the level and the commitment of the PFL and how they are trying to be the best organization in the sport. So little by little, I think they're going to be gaining more and more ground in that area. Uh, so I'm excited to see Francis Ngannou uh, fight in the PFL. I hope I have the opportunity to call one of his fights finally. I'm excited to see who he's going to face in the PFL. I know he's got a big boxing match with Tyson Fury first. Um, But uh, yeah, I I think it's a testament to the commitment of the PFL and how they're trying to attract the best fighters in the world. And I think it's giving options uh, to not only a lot of the professional fighters out there, uh, but to mixed martial arts fans as well. All right, just one last thing here for you today before we start wrapping things up. Uh, I have to ask this question just because it happened pretty recently. A uh, former opponent of yours who you've called a lot of fights for after you had retired, Jose Aldo, uh, recently inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame. Just want to get your thoughts on the King of Rio's induction there. Oh, man, I can go on and on, but uh, Jose Aldo is one of those guys who I always looked up to. Um, one of the best to ever do it. And as I look back on my career, while it was a loss, uh, a decision loss to someone like a Jose Aldo, it, it's one of the things I'm probably most proud of. It was an absolute honor to face someone on that level. I think he is a mixed martial arts master. I had the opportunity to fight him in his prime and learn so much from that experience as a competitor, as a martial artist, as a fighter. Um, and... Yeah, it, it's one of it's what it will be one of my fondest memories, and um, want to wish him congratulations on an absolutely spectacular career. Looks like he's going into boxing now a little bit as well. I know that's something he always wanted to do. Um, so you know, I, I don't think his story is, is written just quite yet, but I think um, you know, definitely an absolute legend, and um, I, I wish him the best to him and his family. All right, Kenny, I appreciate the time. I know you're busy with the media rounds here. I'm going to let you take off just last thing before you head out for the day. Uh, social media, so people know where to follow you at. You want to give a shout out to the podcast that you do with John Anik. I know you guys, I believe, are doing some work with DraftKings as well. A lot of excitement there. Anything like that that you got to, you know, plug. Floor is yours, man. Take it away. John, thanks so much. Yeah, you guys could uh, reach me at Kenny Florian on social media uh, and check out our podcast. We're on the DraftKings uh, YouTube channel on the DraftKings network as well. We also have clips of our pa- podcast over on our uh, YouTube channel, Anna Florian Podcast. And um, let's see, that's pretty much it, man. Thank you for your time and uh, appreciate it.